the best investments over the long run come from the best companies. So, so the question is, how do you find them? Peter Thiel gave a talk he called competition is for losers. I had two takeaways from this talk. Basically, there are two types of companies, monopolies and non-monopolies. And he says monopolies make money and non-monopolies don't. Over the past 26 years, Amazon has become one of the most powerful companies in history. You could argue that this company has more power than some countries. The question is, how did this happen? Hi there, who are you? I'm Jeff Bezos. And what, are your, what is your claim to fame? <laughs> I'm the founder of Amazon.com. Jeff Bezos is widely known for being the richest man in the world, but he's accomplished a lot more than that in his lifetime. Even at an early age, he was showing signs of brilliance. He's been quoted as saying that whenever he was a kid, he became what he called a garage inventor. As a kid, he created a mechanism to close gates, a solar cooker from an umbrella and tinfoil, and an electrical alarm system to keep his half-siblings out of his room. As a high schooler, he was unsurprisingly a very good student and graduated as valedictorian of his class. During his valedictorian speech, he stated that his final objective was to get all people off the earth and to see it turned into a huge national park. If you're aware of Blue Origin, you'll know he's well on his way to doing this. If you're not, I'll be talking about that in a second. He graduated from Princeton University with two degrees, one in electrical engineering and the other in computer science with a 4.2 GPA. He then went on to work for a fintech telecommunications startup, then the banking industry, and then later worked on mathematical modeling for a hedge fund. By only age 30, he was the senior vice president of a very large investment management firm. He left this firm to start Amazon.com. In 1994, him and his wife drove from New York to Seattle to start the new e-commerce bookstore. Jeff Bezos actually wrote the business plan for Amazon in the car during this road trip. Much like his childhood inventions, he started this company out of his garage. Only seven years after starting Amazon, he had to help his company survive the dot-com bubble, a time when most internet companies were declaring bankruptcy. Unsurprisingly, he was ready and his company was strapped with the cash that it needed to survive. As previously mentioned, Bezos founded Blue Origin, his aerospace company, in 2000. Only five years after its founding, Blue Origin launched its first test flight in 2005. The company plans to launch and land its moon lander with astronauts on board in 2024. Believe it or not, Jeff Bezos' long-term vision is having millions of colonies in space housing trillions of people. Finally, in 2013, he bought and saved the slowly dying Washington Post. He helped the company adapt to the age of the internet and a dying print media industry, despite having no prior knowledge of the industry. Jeff Bezos is so respected for his work as a business owner, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's right-hand man, described him as a miracle worker. I don't mind not having caught Amazon early. The guy is kind of a miracle worker. It's very peculiar. I, I give myself a pass on that. At the timing of this video, Jeff Bezos is worth around $185 billion. This is unfathomable wealth, something that he probably can't even quantify. So now that we've talked about the king, let's talk about his battle plan. Unlike most businesses, Amazon's business model wasn't and isn't focused on profits. Amazon solely focuses on increasing its market share and revenue, which will in turn increase shareholder value. The company was founded in 1994 and only really started making profits in 2016. Absolutely every dollar that the company would make would go right back into the business. In 1997, Jeff Bezos wrote in an SEC filing, the company believes that it will incur substantial operating losses for the foreseeable future. To help you understand this, whenever you buy a product from Amazon, Amazon just takes the money that it makes from the sale and invests it into infrastructure that makes it cheaper and faster for them to get you your next product. For Amazon, the goal isn't to make money through profit. The goal is to grow exponentially and build wealth through ownership in the company. This is a great strategy for anyone who owns Amazon stock, including its largest shareholder, Jeff Bezos, as Peter Thiel puts it. Most of the value in these companies exists far in the future. For the first 20 years of the company's existence, many people within the investing community believed that this business strategy would never work. They believed that the company would never be profitable. In 2013, one very unfortunate writer wrote, Amazon, as best as I can tell, is a charitable organization for the benefit of consumers. Amazon sells things to people at prices that seem impossible because it actually is impossible to make money that way. Despite still not focusing on profits, in the last 12 months before making this video, Amazon has made $19 billion in operating profit. On top of this minimal profit approach, Amazon focuses on collecting data and utilizing that data effectively to make sure that they're keeping you as a customer locked into the Amazon ecosystem. Ming 
Zhang, the former chief strategy officer at Alibaba, described a smart business as one that has, quote, most operational decisions made by machines that allows the company to adapt rapidly to changing market conditions and consumer preferences. Amazon is exactly that. It's recording your data consistently and allowing machine learning to make adjustments to what it believes you as an individual would like to buy. This is why Amazon wants to be integrated into every part of your life. The more decisions you make that they have access to, the more data they can collect. When you shop on Amazon, they know what you like to buy, what you want to buy, what your hobbies are, what projects you might be working on, what your style is like. When you use Alexa, they know what you're interested in, what your schedule is, what's on your shopping list, even whenever you wake up in the morning. When you use Amazon Video or Amazon Music, they know what entertainment you enjoy or what genres you like. You can see how they're assembling a vast storage of information on you as an individual. They utilize this data to keep you locked in as an Amazon consumer. In Jeff Bezos' own words, we first measure ourselves in terms of metrics most indicative of our market leadership, customer and revenue growth. And then of course, how do they increase that second metric, revenue growth? Well, they already know what you want to buy. So now all they need to do is make sure that the buying process is as fast and as easy as possible. After creating one of the fastest logistics networks in the world and gaining your trust as a customer, they then prioritize making it as easy as possible to make a purchase on Amazon. This is why they were the first to implement one-click shopping and one of the reasons why they developed Alexa, so that you could shop with your voice. The company knows you're more likely to make a purchase if there's less friction. So now we need to talk about what exactly does Amazon do? first, Amazon's core business. Everyone knows Amazon as an e-commerce giant. They offer Amazon Prime, which gives unlimited two-day, one-day, and same-day delivery access to its nearly 112 million U.S. members. These members have access to millions of products that span almost all product categories. In 2019, the average Amazon Prime member spent $1,400 on the platform. They sell both their own products and third-party products on their platform. These make up 46% and 54% of sales, respectively. In order to deliver these packages, Amazon has fulfillment centers all over the country. Amazon also owns Amazon Robotics, which designs and develops robots that help automate these fulfillment centers. It then utilizes carriers like USPS, UPS, FedEx, and DHL to fulfill these deliveries, along with its own logistics arm called Amazon Logistics. Through this arm, its distribution and logistics capabilities are extremely impressive and growing very quickly. They own planes, truck trailers, vans, and they're testing out drones and what they call scouts to deliver packages. The company is working to to be able to deliver to you almost anywhere. Using the Amazon Key application and other Amazon smart products, they now have the ability to deliver to your car, inside your garage, inside your home rather than just on your porch, and inside your gate if you have one. Recently, Amazon ordered a fleet of 100,000 electric delivery vehicles from electric vehicle company Rivian. In 2019, Amazon invested heavily into self-driving technology company Aurora, and in 2020, Amazon bought the autonomous vehicle company Zooks. Amazon's Zooks just released its first autonomous taxi in December of 2020. Next, Amazon designs, develops, and sells many of its own products. First, they've designed hardware like smart speakers, tablets, e-readers, smart displays, the Fire TV stick, smart home cameras, wall plugs, routers, and even the Echo Auto for your car. Amazon then developed Amazon Alexa, its virtual assistant AI technology. This is what powers most of its devices. Additionally, other companies will make hardware and license the right to integrate Alexa into their devices. Amazon is so dominant, it's integrated into major competing devices such as Facebook's portal. Additionally, Amazon sells many of its own products, some with Amazon branding and some hidden under different branding. For example, there's Amazon Basics, Amazon Elements, and Amazon Essentials, but then there are hidden Amazon brands such as Stone & Beam furniture, Good Threads clothing, Core 10 sports apparel, Nature's Wonder supplements, Amazing Baby products, Wag Pet supplies, Beely Beauty products, and those are just naming a few. Next, Amazon has firmly established itself within the media and entertainment industry. The firm has Prime Video, the Netflix-like streaming service, along with its own filming studio called Amazon Studios to create its own content. Amazon also owns IMDB, which helps provide data to their entertainment arm. The company also owns Amazon Music, which in 2019 owned a 
shocking 15% of the world's music streaming market. Amazon also owns Twitch, which is a live streaming platform that focuses on gaming along with music broadcasts and other creative content. And then on top of that, Amazon now streams professional sporting events, including its recent 49ers Cardinals game, which was exclusively streaming on Amazon Prime and Twitch. Another major segment of Amazon's business is Amazon Web Services. Amazon has a dominant 33% market share in cloud computing. AWS, which is one of the most critical pieces of Amazon's profitability, made the company $10 billion in 2019. AWS represented approximately 12% of Amazon's total revenue in 2020. Just some of AWS's clients include Netflix, Uber, Expedia, Yelp, LinkedIn, Facebook, BBC, Baidu, ESPN, Adobe, Twitter. And again, this is just naming a few of them. When AWS went down for less than a day in 2017, one article wrote that it had, quote, broken the internet. Next, Amazon is in a heated battle for the $650 billion US grocery market. Their first major move into this market was whenever they bought Whole Foods for $14 billion. Since then, Amazon has only continued to battle for this US grocery market. Amazon has opened up Amazon Fresh and Amazon Go Grocery. These are meant to be more affordable grocery options than what's offered at Whole Foods. In Amazon Fresh, you use what they call dash carts that allow you to scan your items as you put them into the cart and check out straight from your dash cart. At Amazon Go Grocery, all you have to do is scan your Amazon QR code whenever you enter, grab what you want, and walk out. Additionally, Amazon has opened Amazon Go, which basically serves as a convenience store. They offer healthy, ready-made food that you can grab on the go. In this store, again, all you have to do is scan your Amazon QR code, grab what you want, and walk out. Other notable business segments that Amazon is involved in include Amazon Four Star and Amazon Bookstores, Amazon Pharmacy, Amazon Home Services, Zappos, which is an online retailer, and Lab126, which is Amazon's research and development team. They invent and design most of the company's software and high-profile electronic devices. As you can tell, this is an extremely diversified company, and for a company that does so many things, they're unbelievably successful in most of them. Part of the reason this company has been so successful is because of its willingness to take risks. Jeff Bezos was once quoted saying, if you have a 10% chance of making a 100x return, you should take that bet every time. Bezos is betting if they're successful 10% of the time, it will make up for the other 90% of projects that fail. For example, one of the biggest risks the company ever took was Prime 2-Day Shipping. When they launched the service, they didn't know exactly how much it was going to cost the company. Well, today, Amazon Prime is one of the largest subscription services in the world and has defined the image of the company. But of course, with risk comes failure. The list of projects that Amazon has tried and failed at seems endless. These are just a few of the ones that I found. Amazon's Fire Phone, Amazon Spark, which was meant to be an Instagram-like shopping platform, Amazon Restaurants, which was meant to be a food delivery service, Amazon Pop-Up Stores, Amazon Web Store, which is basically meant to be an equivalent to Shopify, Amazon Destinations, a hotel booking website, Amazon's Digital Wallet, Amazon Portable Card Reader, which was meant to be like Square's mobile card reader. And again, these are just scratching the surface. Like everything, risk comes with failure. But taking these risks is why Amazon is one of the most successful companies in the world. As Jeff Bezos said, if the size of your failures isn't growing, you're not going to be inventing at a size that can actually move the needle. So it's clear that Amazon is powerful, but the question is exactly how powerful is this company? In the 1860s, John D. Rockefeller Standard Oil was in an oil refining titan. He used his dominance to force his competitors to sell out to him and his empire. He would attempt to buy his competition, and if they refused, he would just operate at a loss, sometimes eroding the price of oil by up to 80% until his competition went bankrupt. Unsurprisingly, this strategy worked well. By 1880, he owned 90% of the industry. This is what is called predatory pricing. It's whenever a company sells a product below cost to make competitors leave the market. Well, in 2009, Amazon began undercutting an emerging rival, Quidzy, which oversaw diapers.com. When Amazon offered to purchase the emerging retailer, Quidzy refused. In response, Amazon simply undercut the price of diapers. Amazon knew Quidzy couldn't run at a loss for as long as they could. Amazon reportedly took a $200 million loss as a result of this war. After Quidzy finally gave up and sold out, Amazon raised their prices back up to what they were before the price war. In 2017, Amazon shut down its subsidiary, Quidzy, because 
because it quote, wasn't profitable. The company used predatory pricing to corner a smaller market until it had eliminated the competition. They'll corner smaller markets with smaller competitors that simply can't compete with Amazon distribution or pricing. On top of being massively successful, the company is showing monopolistic characteristics. Amazon currently owns a commanding 39% of online retail in 2020. But if you look at their dominance within each market sector, it gets even more interesting. As of 2018, Amazon had over 90% market share in five different product categories. With Amazon's ability to corner smaller markets with nearly unlimited capital, ability to vertically integrate, its willingness to operate at a loss, and its existing logistics infrastructure, businesses are constantly wary of Amazon entering their market. For example, whenever Amazon launched Amazon Pharmacy in November, every major pharmaceutical stock was hammered by the news. Walgreens dropped 10%, CVS dropped 9%, and GoodRx plummeted 22%. Basically, if Amazon enters a market, the betting money is on Amazon, not the existing businesses. Because Amazon is arguably too powerful, the company does almost anything that it can to prevent government intervention. This includes 115 lobbyists influencing government officials, publicly saying that they aren't a monopoly and portraying their market as still very competitive. They spent almost $17 million in lobbying expenses in 2019 alone. People uh, are constantly lying about the nature of the businesses they're in. And it's because you don't want to get regulated by the government, you don't want the government to come after you. So you will never say that you have monopoly. So anyone who has a monopoly will pretend that they're in incredible competition. The retail market we participate in is extraordinarily large and competitive. Amazon accounts for less than 1% of the $25 trillion global retail market and less than 4% of US retail. We compete against large established players like Target, Costco, Kroger, and of course, Walmart. Another opinion that many analysts have stated is that even if Amazon isn't a monopoly, it can be considered what is called a monopsony. A monopsony is when there is just one buyer that controls the market. So rather than there just being one entity that can sell you products, there's just one entity that can buy your products. This buyer is the main purchaser of goods and services from sellers, leaving few other options to sell to. Basically, the third parties that sell on Amazon don't have many effective alternatives to Amazon. eBay simply doesn't have the reach, and selling on Walmart is much more difficult than selling on Amazon, leaving one obvious option. According to eMarketer, a source Amazon cited in submissions to this committee, Amazon has nearly seven times the market share of its closest e-commerce competitor. One seller told us that, and I quote, Amazon continues to be the only show in town. No matter how angry sellers get, they have nowhere else to go. Congresswoman, with great respect, I, I do disagree with that. I believe that there are a lot of uh, options. Even if you're successful selling on Amazon's platform, you're constantly having to look over your shoulder as an independent seller. Amazon has access to all of its third-party data, meaning despite what Amazon claims, there is evidence that the company uses seller data to determine the next competing Amazon product that they want to launch. So basically, if you're anyone but Amazon, you're in Amazon's crosshairs. So in conclusion, you can argue that Amazon is not only one of the most powerful companies in the world, but that it may be more powerful than some countries. The current market cap of this company is $1.6 trillion. This is greater than the GDP of major countries like Russia, Australia, South Korea, Spain, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, Argentina, Sweden, and I could go on. In fact, this list would be a lot shorter if I only included the countries with larger GDPs. That list would only consist of 10 countries. As of right now, it looks like the only thing stopping Amazon is government intervention. If the government ever does step in, I can pretty confidently tell you how that will go. The government will simply break off AWS into its own company. If this ever does happen, there's a lot of analysts that think that the two companies separately would be worth more than United Amazon. As of right now, the only company that seems to be throwing punches back at Amazon is Walmart. Currently, Walmart holds a 5.3% e-commerce market share versus Amazon's 38.7%. Outside of government intervention, Amazon appears to be nearly unstoppable. But there is one company that I think has a shot against Amazon, at least on the world stage. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Let them fight.